Okay, so it's time to transition to the second part of our program. And again, as I said, it's another outstanding and totally useful uh, resource that's available online. And I'm talking about the Washington Burgers dashboard that went live in 2015. And um, Randy Robinson created the dashboard. He's a retired computer programmer with skills, abilities, and imagination that some of us cannot even conceive of. Um, information about his professional background and how he came to create the dashboard. And while we're focusing on Washington, uh, he has made it global. Um, anyway, information about Randy is available in the most recent WAS newsletter, number 195, which is available at the WAS website. And I encourage you to look it up if you have not seen it. I thought it was very interesting reading. And when I approached Randy a couple of weeks ago and asked if he would be willing to give a presentation about the dashboard tonight, he was reluctant only because he and his wife, Jane Hadley, were going to be traveling during this time. And he wasn't sure where they would be on Monday night or what the quality of the internet would be. So he agreed to pre-record his presentation before they left. So we would be able to share it with you tonight, which is what we will do. But as it turns out, they have arrived at their destination and have good internet access. So after we play the recording, Randy is going to join us. So he will be able to respond to your questions in person. So Elaine, if you are ready to start the recording. Fingers crossed. Hello everyone, my name is Randy Robinson. I am the developer of the Birders Dashboard and I am going to be doing a demonstration of the dashboard. So let's get to it. And I'm gonna start by sharing my screen with you. And here is my browser, and I am on the WAS homepage here. And this is a great place to get to the dashboard. Up here near the top, we have the navigation bar or the menu bar for the WAS homepage. And here we have a tab for birding resources. And in that tab, if we go down, there is a link to the birders dashboard. So I'll click on the link and up pops the dashboard. Now, there are uh, three areas to, uh, to the dashboard. Up at the top here, we have what I call the control area, which has some settings and some buttons which allow us to get to the different dashboard functions. Down below, on the left, we have a map. This is a Google map. And on the right, we have a listing area. And what shows up in this listing area varies with each function. So let's go back up here and take a closer look at the control area. The top line here says eBird sightings from the last 14 days. Now, you'll notice that this 14 is part of a dropdown. And so we can set this to anywhere from 1 to 30 days, with the default being 14. So I'll leave it here at the default. So this means that all of the data we see from eBird will be from the last 14 days. The second line here says, choose a county. And this is set to the default, which is all of Washington. This is another drop down. And if we click here, we can see that all the counties of Washington are listed here. So if there's a particular county we want to focus on, we can click on that here and go to that county. I'm going to leave it set to the default here of all, all Washington state for the moment. And now we come to the control section and we'll see that the default function is notable sightings. That means rarities. And that means in our list area over here, we have a list of all the rarities that have been reported to eBird in the last 14 days. Now, just underneath these function buttons, is a line, a, an informational line. In this case, it just says eBird determines which sightings 
are notable. So let's take a look over here in the sightings list and look at a particular sighting. Now, the first thing we see is a little X here to the left of the sighting. Well, what does that X mean? We go to the top of the list and it says here, X means not yet reviewed by eBird. eBird has volunteers around the state, expert birders, who review each of these rare bird sightings. And eBird will allow information of the sighting out to the public before the sighting has been reviewed. But we mark it here with an X so that everyone knows that this sighting has yet to be accepted by eBird. Now, uh, we'll see to the right of that little X, we've got the species, which in this case is Glaucus gull. In italics, we have the county, which is Cowlitz. And here is the uh, location name. And this says 7th Avenue Park Longview. Then we have the date, which is January 25th, the time 1205, the name of the birder who reported this, Eric Evans. And then you'll see we have a little camera icon. And that camera icon means that there's a photo of this species in the eBird checklist. Now we have two buttons here. We have the eBird checklist bus button. And if we check on this, we'll be taken to the eBird website and we'll see the checklist in full and we'll get to look at all the information that's on the checklist. And then to the right of that button is a button which says market. And that means mark this location on the map over here on the left. So let's take a look at that right now. So I'm gonna press this market button. And here we've had a marker that's shown up on the map. Let's get that a little bit more centrally focused. And then, as I said, this is a Google map, Google map, so we can zoom in and zoom out. Down here in the right-hand corner, we have plus and minus signs for zooming in and out. And let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna have to recenter this more. Zoom in some more. And we can see that this park looks to be, Seventh Avenue Park seems to be pretty much in uh, downtown Longview, uh, right next to the Cowlitz River. So that tells us where this sighting is. Going back to our listing over here, let's now that we've, we've seen exactly where this is, let's take a look at the eBird checklist. So I'll click on that button. Here we're being taken to the eBird website. This is the checklist. Now we're on the eBird website and from here we can get anywhere in eBird and up here you'll see the navigation bar. But this page just shows the checklist that Eric submitted and you can see all the species that he saw at this place. Over here it says that this is a traveling checklist. Uh, he covered 0.391 miles in 47 minutes. And over here on the right, we see here is our glaucus skull, which is our rarity or our notable sighting. And we've got a description of the gull here, large pale wingtip, same color as back, known sighting picture. And here we have a picture of this gull. So let us click on this. And here we get a blow up. And this is the photo that he submitted. You can study this and decide for yourself about that species. But this is the checklist. Now the checklist opens in a separate tab from the dashboard. So here's the dashboard over here. Here's the checklist. And as we go through, we can get up several checklists and 
be able to hop back and forth from one to the other and still have the dashboard uh, up and available. For the moment, I'm just going to close this tab and I am going to go back here to our checklist again and notice again this is a sighting that has not yet been accepted uh, by eBird. So there are 14 days of sightings here for the whole state. That's a lot of sightings. I'll just try not to make you dizzy but I'll just show you lots and lots of stuff here. And it may be that as we go through and look at these sightings, we may want to see where another sighting is. Here's a red-shouldered hawk uh, at Nisqually. So I'm going to mark that. And we see that the map now shows us both pins. And as we go through and study this list, we may get a lot of pins on this map, a lot of markers, and decide that, you know what, it looks kind of cluttered. I'd like to I'd like to erase those and start over. And so we have a thing here which says, click here to remove markers. And the button says, unmark all. So I'm gonna click that and our markers are gonna go away. And now we have a clean map and we can continue with our study of the notable sightings. So there you have a brief look at notable sightings. I'm going to now look at these other functions on the list, but I'm going to do this in the context of a trip that I'd like to take. I haven't been out to the coast in a while, and I'm really interested in going to uh, the Grays Harbor area. It's always fun to go out there in the winter. There's usually lots of stuff to see. And so I am going to, uh, I'm going to change these settings up here. First of all, I, I think I only want to look at about seven days worth of data for my trip. So I'm going to change the sightings up here from the duration of the sightings from seven to 14. And you may have noticed that the uh, list over here blinked. Well, what happened was when I changed that setting, I went and got a new list uh, uh, from eBird. Uh, and this list is shorter than the previous one. It only has seven days worth of listings. But because the most recent listings are shown first, the top of the list did not change. Now I'd like to go to uh, Grays Harbor. I'd like to go to the West Port Ocean Shores area. So I'm gonna change the focus here from all Washington down to Grays Harbor. So I click there and now, you may have noticed that the list over here blinked again. That's because now we're only showing the Gray's Harbor rarities from the last seven days. This is a much shorter list because it's only the Gray's Harbor list. The list is still ordered from most recent to oldest, and it just shows the seven days. Also, you'll notice that the map has now focused in on Grays Harbor County. Well, one thing that I'd like to do before I make my trip is look at what's going on in some of the hotspots in that area. And here we have the eBird hotspots function. I'm just gonna click the button for that. And what happened here is, first of all, we got some information in our information area. It says click on a hotspot or a popular birding area for sightings and only hotspots with recent reports are shown. So we don't show any hotspots that haven't had activity in the last seven days. Well, let's look at a couple of those hotspots. I'll go down here on the right and I'll zoom in. And I think I'm gonna start with this hot spot right here in Hoquiam. And I'll click on that. And we get a little information thing that pops up that says Hoquiam STP. And I go over here to the right in the listing area. And here we have the Hoquiam STP in Grace Harbor. And here we have a list of all the species that have re been reported there in the last seven 
days. Now these are grouped by checklist with the most recent checklist first. So this first checklist, the most recent is from January 23rd at 1.45 in the afternoon and Jason D is the birder who reported. Again, we have a button for the eBird checklist. We could click this and we'd be taken to the eBird uh, site and we could uh, study uh, Jason's checklist in detail if we wanted. But for right now, what we have is just a list of the different species that he reported. Now, the next checklist is also on January 23rd, and it's from 1.30. So Art Wang was there, 15, started his checklist 15 minutes before Jason's. Now, Art's checklist only has four species on it. Now, it is not the case that Art only saw four species. Instead, what eBird does is for each list, each previous checklist to the most recent, it only shows us species which weren't reported on this more recent checklist. So to see all the species that Art saw, we'd have to click on this eBird checklist button and go study Art's checklist on the eBird site. But rather than do that, now, I think I'll just keep going and we can see that earlier on the 23rd, there's another checklist from Heidi Erland with another list of, of another few species that were not reported either by Art or by Jason. And then there's a checklist from Alex Mayur on the 22nd. And on this check, checklist, there are quite a few species reported. But again, these are only species that were not reported by these pre on these previous checklists. So that's how the hotspot uh, function works. And we can, of course, go and check more of these hotspots. I think I'll blow the map up a little bit. Here it says Bottle Beach. So this is going to be the hot spot for Bottle Beach. That's always popular. And we can look here and see what species have been seen. And again, we see several checklists. And if we want, we can click on this eBird checklist button if we want to study these in more detail. And of course, we could check that we could check on as many of these hotspots as we'd like. But I think for my purposes, we'll just stop right there. Now, another thing you can do is we've seen with the notable sightings, we can get all of the rarities, but we may be interested in birds that are not rarities, uh, that are nonetheless still interesting to us. And so this next function is look for a species. And if we click on that button, we get some more information down here in this area. It says, List includes only species reported in the last seven days. And then we've got a drop down list. And this list has all of those species that were reported. So let's take a look at this list. I don't know what's interesting to you, but uh, red necked grebe. Uh, let's just see what we get when we click on red necked grebe. Well, we see a bunch of markers on the map. And over here in the right, we see some location names. And the location name tells us the date of the sighting and the count for how many redneck greaves were reported on this checklist. So let's say uh, we peruse through this and we're interested in, well, we'll just do the top one, West Haven State Park. If we click on the location here, notice this turns green and the marker down here turns green. So we know that this marker is the West Haven State Park marker. Our little information line says, click on markers to see sightings at each location. 
we can do that. And here we see all the sightings that were seen at West Haven State Park. Notice that our the species that we selected, the redneck grebe, shows up in bold. And we are seeing, we're looking at Jeffrey Bryant's checklist from the 24th. But just, just as with the hotspots, we get all of the checklists that were reported in the last seven days. And these previous checklists show species that were not seen on the most recent checklist. So this works just like the hotspots uh, list of species. Now, notice that we've, while we're looking at the species here, we have lost our list of the locations corresponding to these markers. Well, if we want to get back to that, uh, th that list of locations, up at the top it says, click here to restore list of locations for this species. There is a button here that says restore list. We'll click on that. And here we are back to our list of locations again. So with this look for a species function, we can look at all the species that were reported in Grays Harbor, and we can focus in on those species that are of interest to us, regardless of whether they are rarities. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I go to uh, this Westport Ocean Shores area is sometimes I like to go to this north part of Pacific County. And that includes Toakland, South Bend, Bay Center. That's one of my favorite birding areas. But to go down there and, and check all those places and, and do it any justice, it usually takes an, an extra day. So I, I want to decide whether it's worth my while on this particular trip to try to go down and hit this North Pacific County area. And up here in the functions, right after look for a species, there's a function called choose any location. And what this function does is it lets us focus in on a particular area on the map. So I'm going to click on that. And what this information line says here is click anywhere on the map to see sightings within 10 kilometers. So this 10 kilometers is part of a drop down and we can specify 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25 kilometers. So we're asking eBird to give us all the sightings that show up in a circle of radius of 10 kilometers wherever we drop our marker. Now I'm, I'm gonna leave the, the width of the radius of the circle here at the default of 10. And I am going to, I've practiced at this because this is a favorite area of mine and I am gonna uh, drop my marker uh, right here. And over here, uh, we see what suddenly popped up is a list of species. And these are all, again, these are all the species that have uh, shown up within 10 kilometers of this blue marker. Now let's choose something that there might be a lot of. Um, let's try Song Sparrow. We click, oh, not so many, just one that's in Toakland. Um, Let's try red winged blackbird. Here we see there are a couple now uh, in Toakland to Bay Center. Um, uh, here's our redneck grebe. Just for fun, let's look at our redneck grebe. And there's just one location here, which is in uh, Toakland. But I think you can get the idea that um, when we click on the species here, we get markers in this area uh, 
about where that species is. And so by studying this species list, we can, we can decide whether it really makes sense to take an extra day to go down here and hit this area. Now, it says up here, click on markers to see species at each location. I'm going to do that. And this is our now familiar looking list of species, uh, grouped again by checklist with the most recent checklist first. You'll see this is for Toplin Marina. And Terry Martin was there on the 24th. And notice that there's no redneck grebe on her list. But here we go to Randy Hill, who was there on the 21st, and redneck grebe is on his list. So it has the same pattern here. On the 24th, Terry saw these species, and Randy Hill saw these species, which are not on Terry's list, but Randy may have seen some of these species as well. And again, if we want to see exactly what uh, Terry saw or Randy saw, we can click on the eBird checklist button. And again, we've lost our list of species here, but to restore that list, we go back to the top, we find the button that says restore list, we click on that, and we get our list of species back. Now, one thing to notice, I've, I've done this without changing the county up here. So eBird lets us do this particular function, choose any location anywhere on the map. In fact, we could do it anywhere on the world and we're not restricted to the county that's chosen here. So that's pretty handy uh, for this trip uh, in particular. Also, it says here, click here to choose a new location. And so we can click here, things get reset to blank. And let's just for fun say, maybe I wanna go down here to this area of um, um, Iwako and uh, Long Beach Peninsula. And so I can put a marker there and I can see everything that's going on in that area. And so by using this function of choose any location, I can just poke around in these different smaller uh, sections of the map just to see what's going on. All right, so that's choose any location. Our final function is called recent checklists. And we're still in Grays Harbor up here. I'll just move the map up there manually, get us back in Grace Harbor. And I'm going to take a, a look at recent checklists. And eBird is working. eBird is thinking. Ah, there we go. It's finally given up the goods. Now, over here, we have a a similar type of listing, except this time, instead of a species, we have a birder. So the first uh, uh, checklist on the list. And again, these are in chronological uh, order with the most recent being first. And this is Chris Drivdahl, Grays Harbor. And this is an exact location and the date and the time. And we have our same buttons here. We could click here and take a look at this checklist on the eBird site. We could also mark it on the map by clicking here. And we have just, again, a pretty long list of sightings. Now, unlike the other functions, this listing checklist function is not bound by the number of days. Instead, it's bound by the number of lists. And eBird will give us approximately 200 uh, checklists at one time. And so let's, this is Gray's Harbor. It's fairly heavily birded. We'll go check the first list is on the 25th. 
And I'm going to just scroll all the way to the bottom. Don't get dizzy, please. And down here at the bottom, we see that the uh, last checklist, uh, the oldest one in this list, of, is 10 January. So we have about 15 days worth of checklists here. If we were to do this for all Washington, we would not even get one day's worth of checklists because uh, we're, we have that 200 checklist limit. And on most days, there are a few hundred checklists are submitted in Washington state. So depending on the county that you've chosen, you may just get part of a day or a day or two's worth of checklists, or you may get uh, two or three weeks worth. Uh, it all depends. One last thing is, this has an interesting thing. If we're interested in going back in time, again, I told you this is not limited by late by date, we can look at uh, a much earlier uh, uh, checklist. Uh, I'm gonna go back in time, all the way back to May of 2021, May 8th. I've chosen May 8th, 2021. I'm gonna submit that date. And Ebert is gonna think and think and think and try to decide whether I've been a good boy and whether I can look at these checklists. So it is thinking and it's decided, yep, I'm gonna let him see the list. So here we go. Notice this is a different list. Mary Huff is the first one. And we'll jump down to the date and it says 8 May, 2021. And then we'll go down all the way to the bottom. And the oldest checklist is also 8 May, 2021. 5.55 in the morning. So Rebecca Hausman was the early bird that got the early birds, I guess. She's the early bird that got the early birds. Okay, so that's kind of a fun function if you just want to go poke around in history and see what checklists have been submitted. So that's the, the basic overview of the functionality of the dashboard. I also want to point out that there are different versions of the dashboard. What we're looking at here is what I call the full screen version, which is appropriate for desktops or maybe your iPad, uh, laptops, something where you've got a pretty good screen to look at. I also do a version which is for the phone. Let me see if I can find that. I'm going to now share this, uh, this iPhone simulator. And here we have the Birders dashboard for the, for the phone. This works on, on Google and iPhone. And you can see that it's quite a, bit of quite a bit different look, but we have some of the same buttons. Here's our list of counties. It's a dropdown. So in the case of the iPhone, it shows up down below here, and then we've got our functions as buttons, notable sightings, hotspots, etc. Also though, we have up at the list some navigation buttons. This screen is too small to get our different areas on, on one screen, so it's broken up in three different ones. This is the home, I call it the home screen. It's, a, it's our control area, excuse me. We also have a button for list. We go here. I've done the, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, recent checklist that I've done. And here's Mary Huff again. This was done on the 23rd. So these checklists date from them. You can see those checklists. This is our list. And let's mark this. Well, let's, I'll first show you. We can go to the map. There's our map. I'll go back to the list, we'll mark it. And there we see Mary's checklist marked on our map. We can go back to the list, we can go back to home and choose a different function. So this is what the dashboard looks like on a phone. Now, how do you get to these different versions? I'm gonna go back 
to the desktop version to show you. Up here on the navigation bar, there's a tab for versions. And I'll click here. And now I've shown you the desktop version, the full screen version, and the phone version for the Washington State version of Birders Dashboard. There are two other regional areas for uh, of, of dashboards for two other regional areas. One is the world. I have a version of the dashboard that works for the world. And there's both a full screen version and a mobile version. And there are links to those here. Uh, there's also a dashboard for the US and Canada. And we have the full screen version for desktops, et cetera, that's here. And we have the phone version and that's here. And again, the phone version works on both Android and iPhones. So that again was on this version tab. We click here and we can get to all the different versions of the dashboard. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I hope that you've uh, found that interesting. Uh, I really encourage you to uh, take a look at this uh, on your own. Uh, this is a, it's a web, a website, a web application. Nothing is downloaded to your device. There are no cookies that are deposited on your device. There's no security risk, whatever. And you can just poke around. There's, there's no, you don't have to sign up. There's no membership required. Just go ahead and play with this and uh, see what you think. Uh, and uh, uh, again, I'd like to uh, thank you for taking the time to sit through this. And I'd like to thank Was and especially Vicki and Elaine for giving me the opportunity to do this. Thank you. Um, Elaine, again, are you willing to field the questions for us or load them up? I see uh, that Randy has joined us and is available to answer questions if uh, you would like to pose some to him. Well, I'm going to tell you there are very few questions because it was crystal clear, but there's a whole bunch of, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal, amazing, kudos, uh, testimonials from people who use it already. Um, I wrote in the chat, we're all going to go safely international birding, thanks to Randy, because some of us aren't quite ready to go really internationally yet. <laughs> There's a couple of diagnoses about that not being a glaucous gull, which we realize it's in the hands of the e-birder, not Randy, but I don't see any questions. That's a tribute to clear communication. Amen. Is there another living soul who could have constructed this instrument? You could put a question mark after that. <laughs> well, it's beyond my imagination how he did it. And not only did it for Washington, but did it for the world. Uh, no, I'm I, I'm traveling and I'm away from uh, all of my tools. If you click on that um, uh, versions uh, tab on the uh, navigation bar that I showed in the demo, that's the navigation bar is at the top and the leftmost tab is a uh, version. There's a link to it. So just uh, go to that on your phone and uh, click on it and it will show up. Uh, if you just go to um, uh, the link for the dashboard, in your phone, you may see a button pop up that's uh, where the dashboard detects that um, uh, you're a, you have a small screen and it says to go to the small screen version, click this button. And so you can just do that. Uh, and then on the, uh, once you get to uh, the dashboard page or the dashboard uh, screen, uh, 
you can save that to your home screen on your phone. And uh, again, in that version, in that uh, document that has the different, the links to the different versions, uh, there are some instructions for how to do that uh, on an iPhone and on a Google phone. What a resource. <laughs> this is just remarkable. Thank you so much for creating this recording for us and for joining us tonight um, so that you could be here to, to respond. We are very, very grateful to you. And I think at this point we can say the meeting is wrapping up. Good night. Thank you, Vicki.